Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Completing the Square Notes Day 2. So you should have already watched the first video that kind of run down the whole process of how to complete the square. Um, this is going to add a little bit to it. So if you haven't watched the first video, you need to do that for sure. Uh, and then we're just going to do, this is, should be a pretty quick one. We're going to do just two um, extra examples together on something different that could happen. But it also, like I said, will make it so that you see a couple more uh, completing the squares. So hopefully the more times you see it, the more times you do it, the more it'll make sense. All right. So on the first video, we talked about how you could only do completing the square if there was no number in front of the x squared. So this one you can see has a two. So our question is, what do you do with the leading coefficient is greater than one? So the first thing you need to do is divide everything, and I mean everything, by that coefficient. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and then you just do the process. So you do the whole thing. So we're going to go through this one in a lot of detail together. And then after that, um, I would like you to pause and try number two kind of on your own and see if you've got it. All right. So the first thing that it asks us to do is if there's something there, we need to divide everything by that number. Now, for this week, we are pretty being pretty nice to you. Do you notice that all of these, when we divide by two, are going to be a nice, neat, whole number? Um, that doesn't always happen, and then you have to deal with fractions. But for our case this time, this is how we're going to um, have them set up. All right, so now don't forget that zero divided by two is still zero. Okay, that sometimes is a common mistake. But if you divide everything else, you can see that we still have nice, neat numbers. All right, so now we'll go through the process of completing the square. So I need to add four to both sides and put my squares in the correct places. So one on each side, add one to both sides. All right, now we need to figure out what goes in the squares and that's where we take half of B and square it. So our B is 10, B is always the number in front of the X. So if I take 10 divided by two, that's five, five squared is 25. So that's what goes into both of those. All right, now the next step, we've specifically chosen 25 because we can make this look like this. And I always add those two together right now so I can get that cleaned up. All right, so we want it to look like this. So the square root of x squared is x. Bring down the plus and the square root of 25 is five. PST factoring right there. Now we can solve using radicals, just like what we have done probably for the past week here now. So square root both sides. You get x plus five equals. We can't take the square root of 29 without getting a decimal, so I'll just put that plus or minus in front of it so I for, don't forget that we need a positive and negative. And now I'm going to subtract 5 to both sides because we need to get x absolutely alone. So I'm going to have negative 5. I like to write that first. I think it, um, for a couple of reasons, it helps for what we're doing down the road, especially in advanced algebra. Um, it also maybe helps it so that we set up those two equations to solve a little bit easier. So now we have to do this problem with a plus. So negative 5 plus the square root of 29, and then do it with that minus, negative 5 minus the square root of 29. You need to grab your calculator. Remember that if your only calculator at home is a cell phone calculator, flip it on its side and it has the square root right there. Um, but your Chromebook does have a TI, um, one of the yellow ones in the back of my room. So because these are approximate answers, I'm going to put the little squigglies. That'd be 0 0.39 for this one. I'm going to type that into my calculator. And then it's approximately negative 10.39 on that one. That's my two answers. Okay, so the only difference from what we've done um, the earlier on in the week and in your last homework was that um, you had to get rid of the coefficient first by dividing everything by it. All right, then do the process. 
So what I'm going to um, encourage you to do is to pause the video right now and then try number two and then hit play again and see how you did. All right, so we're back. Hopefully you tried this one. So the first thing you would have to do is divide everything by three. Okay. So now we're going to have to set up by subtracting the nine over and putting in our boxes. Add a square to both sides, completing the square. Okay, let's figure out what goes in those squares by taking half of B and squaring it. So negative four squared is a positive 16. Do some simplifying there. I know I've got seven on that right hand side and now I will PST factor this. Sorry about that, that's X minus four. Square root of x, square root of 16, and bring down the first sign. Now square root both sides, so I get x minus 4 equals, and that's if I do the square root of 7, that would be a decimal, so I'm just going to leave it like that until we do it at the end. Now add 4 to both sides to get x alone. So I've got 4 plus or minus the square root of 7. Okay, so now I'm going to do this problem with a plus and do this problem with a the minus. So we get my two answers. These are gonna be approximates. So if I do four plus the square root of seven, I get about 6.65. And then for minus, I get about 1.35. And hopefully that's what you got for your answers. Remember to be careful with the rounding. You do want to round accurately, especially for your homework, so that you are um, not getting it wrong just because of the rounding errors, all right? So this was completing the square day two, and it is basically um, the same except for what to do if you have a coefficient. All right, have a good day, everybody.